why were they created in the first place? Who dictates how they should be used? At the end of the day, we all agree, or we should all agree that it should go back to the original creators. Thank you for coming to my hideouts, as I call it. My name is Chuma. I'm a designer and artist. I live and work out of Lagos, Nigeria. I apply similar skills from entrepreneurship to art and to design. But what holds it all together is the promotion of an identity. That's my agenda, that's my cause. Masking culture actually means a lot, right? That's where you have poetry, arts, music, dance, drama. It's all enshrined in masking culture. I did the research across Africa, created um, these hundred masks, and then discovered NFTs. It's a journey we've all been going towards. So it's inevitable. It's how we navigate it now is what is important. The existence of the blockchain is now affording communities and societies that have been disenfranchised in one way or the other in terms of ownership of their creation, the opportunity to own their narrative and tell their story. And that has a direct impact on the whole subject of reparation and ownership and who owns what. What we take from it is the ability to then tell our stories. And when I say we, I'm talking about us from this part of the world who have an obvious history where the stories, the culture was taken out and then supposedly properly kept, even though not kept in the way they were meant to be, to be used. When it comes to the Benin Bronze, it's been in a very protected space and preserved. Um, definitely, definitely they are being underutilized because these things were made to be in performance, in use. But also being in that protected, caged space is also what has um, manifested as a capitalist gain, right, and capitalist value. So I think it's about changing values and perceptions. Why are you trying to dictate the terms for returning what was obviously stolen? All things being equal and all things being considered, it should be returned, obviously. But I think it goes beyond that. Because if you return them, they are most likely going to be in a museum when you return them, which is just basically moving from frying pan to fire. But you want to return them in such a way that they become more useful, like originally intended. My first NFT was actually the Idea mask. And then I walk into this museum and I see the mask itself in a glass box. And then you look to your right, you're seeing the plaques, right, that we are actually palace recordings, palace commissioned recordings of events in the kingdom. I kind of know the stories. So I think it's because I have that multi um, connection points with these works as opposed to someone that sees them as Benin bronze work from somewhere in Africa. But I'm seeing my friend's story, my friend's history, my own history, my children's history in that mask, and it's all locked up in a glass. That, that kind of hurts, that kind of hurts, and yeah, you just can't control the emotion. It's a bit too much to handle. Yeah, so that's why the tears came out when I saw them at the British Museum. So yeah, definitely they need to be returned, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. <laughs>